listening to this podcast right now. Me? Do you want to hear a fucking podcast about anything and everything? Yeah. Like movies, oh my music, God. television, and more? Oh my God. Well, you've come to the right place. Yes. Subscribe to Journey into Comics Network, Woo. and you get Podcastrophy, oh hosted God. by me, yes. Dick. Why not throw a couple bucks to the Patreon? It's yes. your choice. Yeah. This is a Podcastrophy. That sounds so awesome. The following is a Journey into Comics Network production. For a nicer guy, it couldn't happen. I'm the man of the hour, the man with the power. Diamonds are forever. He put hard times on Dusty Rhodes and his family. And what you gonna do, Andre? History beckons the macho man. Yeah. The best there is, the best there was. Austin 316 said I just swept your ass. Two words for you. Two words. Do I have everybody's attention now? What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to a very special, strange, bizarre episode of Journey into Wrestling. It's take number two. You guys don't know that. Brando and I do. Welcome to the show, Brando. Let's get right into it. How's it going? It it could be better. It could because be because we had so much a better. hell of a show that was a total off the walls tangent city. Had a food order in the middle. We had of a it. food order in the middle. It was totally laid back and cool and fun, and we had a snafu with the board uh, because today, you know, normally when you come down, I say, "Don't worry about the board. I got the Zoom." Well, uh, the girls had to record butt stuff, which is available every Friday on the Journey Comics Network. Cheap pop. Uh, you can find them there. But so they so they took the Zoom, and you're like, "Don't worry, no worries, man. I, I got the board." I'm like, "Hey, just like old times, cool." And you know we, we all like we got like an hour and a half done in the episode. We we we, we talked about a lot of things. Did a random highlight. It, the episode flowed well. We we had a bad case of the giggle sometimes. We we had, we had impromptu voices. It's fun. We're gonna call it jumping my po train. <laughs> we were gonna call it you know. Uh, oh, on my po train, not in it. <laughs> <laughs> jumping my. <laughs> Everybody jump aboard. Well, and I guess it still can be called that, huh? The, it, well, I mean, the thing is, is that... Um, Take two. You tried to plug your phone in, and while the, the board was exporting, you, you turned the power strip off. Yeah, so it was weird, though, because my track had been exported, and it was like 89% or some shit with your track. And I looked over, and my phone wasn't red, and I was like, oh, fuck, it's like at 1%. I need to start charging it. So I went to fuck with the charger, and as soon as I plugged it all the way in and my fucking hand released into the power button, I was just like, doom. I fucking immediately was like, <sighs> and the second time since the Journey into Comics Network has happened, I've lost an episode, and I went fucking a whole fucking 150-something without that pri prior to this. Now, granted, we had the audio from your mic, which picked me up, but and we were able to doctor it but it the sound quality wouldn't have sounded good so i decided let's just let's put this out this isn't going to be nearly as good as that other episode it's also going to be way later it's going to be way later it's going to be almost thursday by the time this actually goes to air to you guys and it's also probably probably going to be shorter because buddy i'm running out of steam i'm running out of steam i'm running i'm running on fumes i ate so now i'm ready for food coma yeah i love you that. know after i have food baby <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> Mental images. Anyways, uh, today we're going to talk about a lot of stuff, Brando. But first I want to mention it's awesome because we're in studio together. It's part of the reason everything happened how it did. I was coming Part of the reason why we lost an episode. Part of the reason why we lost an episode is because we decided to do an episode late. Hey, let's come together. We're going to be together anyways. Let's just... Put it out there where we can have this energy together. And, dude, it really was a great episode. There were a lot of crazy random things. I mean, I, we were tagged in posts in the middle of the episode and all these random things or whatnot. But we're going to make the best of this episode today. So we're going to kind of not really rush through this, but we're going to swiftly work our way uh, through some of the news and stuff we've already done because we've already talked about it so we can refine our thoughts and yeah. ideas. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. So... Um... 
Our good st- friend Nick Maxson. First is, tangent. <laughs> he is attending a uh, a show at the Emerson. Cool. In 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 Indy. Um, uh, it's happening now. So. Oh. And it is the um, he it, the the headliner is Darkest Hours or Darkest Hour. Okay. And <laughs> look at the name. Horse. Oh, horse. <laughs> Period. Whores. <laughs> We're playing with whores. <laughs> uh, Brando, it's funny. Uh, everything happens for a reason. We lost this episode, and it also means that we get to maybe be some of the earliest people on the internet at this point to be covering this news, because look at the headline on WWE.com. Yeah, I saw that just while we were eating dinner. Officially, uh, Johnny Gargano. NXT career done, and on the episode that you'll never hear, <laughs> it's a running theme. I'm oh. so sorry. We ran down all these possible call ups for stuff. <clears throat> Before we get there, let's do this in a little bit of order here. So, <clears throat> what is the first thing on the docket? Obviously, it's the elimination chamber. The, Seven. The elimination <laughs> chamber. Elimination <laughs> chamber. <laughs> I was trying to be dramatical with it. You were grammatical with it. Grammatical <laughs> is the problem. I got grammatical with it. Elimination chamber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fucking with it, Brando. It's funny. Okay, so at the elimination chamber, we have it here. <clears throat> Who will survive the elimination chamber match to face the beast at Mania? That's the question. You made my you, you made my microphone move and it went i like, whoa, it's falling on me. <laughs> okay. It's not going to happen. So Who let's... will survive? Uh, well, what did I say on the episode that didn't air? It, <laughs> I would be crazy to say that Roman Reigns would not be walking out of this as the victor. Yeah, uh, that's a possibility. Alternately, I can strongly see Strowman. Strowman Lesnar makes for an amazing main event at Mania. Yeah, uh, uh, that's what I said on a previous episode. I, that's what I want to see personally. So you also had an idea on what Roman might end up doing. Um, if I were them right now, I, I I would be booking Roman with Ronda Rousey because they need a partner. If, if they can't get The Rock, I mean, the the Rock would be perfect because you're tying it back to the 31 moment. Red Ribbon. Tell you know. him. And so, but if you don't have Rock, I said that, you know, I heard that they're leaning towards Braun, and and while that's cool, and that instantly makes Braun a star, um, also makes the uh, payoff for Survivor Series happen exactly, which is awesome. But <clears throat> with with Roman, Roman is the guy that he's won. Uh, he's main evented like the past three past three WrestleManias. He's won a title now at, at WrestleMania. And putting him with Ronda to help out with the authority instantly puts your top guy in there with the top box office draw for WrestleMania. Yep. And people tune in to see that. Cool. And then they see this big, two big behemoths just throw and punch the, I hope they have a knockout drag out match. Like, the little scuffle that we saw at Rumble. Oh man, when uh, Strowman accidentally got him with the knee, and and then he, yeah, and then Lesnar gave him that, give him that nice <laughs> fist. I would love to see a full match like that where they just beat the tar out of each other. You know, Rogan talked about that, right? Did he? They just this past week he had somebody on and he was talking about how he's like, yeah, uh, Lesnar was facing some dude in wrestling and really gave him one, and then they like showed the clip and man, I forgot how much he nailed Braun with that right hook he just fucking clobbers him you know and uh righty ho you know that's how that that's how the business goes Mm -hmm. uh alternately you could make a case seth roman seth roman (laughs) seth rollins (laughs) i saw (laughs) (laughs) seth roman i love it <laughs> Look who's side by side, Seth and Roman. It's exactly what happened. Seth Rollins is a good uh, possible option. He beat um, Reigns and Lesnar to win his first title, cashing in Money mm-hmm. in the Bank, which is an awesome callback. Uh, also, you got to look at Finn Balor as an option. First Universal Champ. It would be interesting to have a David versus Goliath type mm-hmm. match. Going back to Rollins, though, uh, on the now. 
ill-fated lost episode, um, I discussed that I heard that they were looking at Rollins and Angle. I love that. They're going to tear the house down. If that match actually happens, it may steal the entire card. Mm-hmm. Like, it may be the match of the night, hands down. You think about it. You you have Rollins, Angle, AJ, Shinsuke. Man, it's a it's shaping up to be... Possibly Cena, Taker. It, it's shaping up to be an amazing mania. Like, and I'm then, actually super jacked. And then you have, like... Um, you know, like the whole Rousey, you know, intrigue, you know, you have the possibility of, and we talked about this, this is a, a possible singles match. That's it. The singles match is happening on, on the SmackDown side, but the, to get a match between a, a WrestleMania t- title match between, um, Oscar and Charlotte. No, 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 no. Uh, Sorry. A, a Bobby Roode. <clears throat> oh yeah. And RKO, Randy Orton. Yeah. Uh, RKOing people out of nowhere. And and that's amazing that he's really like trying to solidify that as his legacy at this point in the game. You know, speaking of which, uh, let's go back to the card here. I had something to say about this card, and I totally just you know. And it's like, what does Miz do? Where does he go? I heard a uh, and rumor I heard a long time ago is that it, that it was going to be him and Braun. But at this point, I'm like, I put him with Finn. I actually had a totally different thought. I put him with Elias. Elias is over. He is, yes. I mean, he's getting consistent pops every night. Who wants to everybody else walk with Elias? I mean, he finally got his first shirt. It's kind of cheeky, but it's there, you know? So I just feel if if you're doing something with Miz and you want to elevate somebody, and that's what Miz is going to start to do is elevate these other guys, mm-hmm. maybe Elias, maybe Finn. I agree with you on Finn. I think that's an awesome match to be had. I mean, Miz and Finn have already had matches together, but with a title on the line at Mania, Finn's first IC title, mm-hmm. it would be incredible, honestly. And I mean, and I agree with you with, with Elias, and I think the reason why they wouldn't do it is because both are technically heels. They're trying to book Elias heel right now, and so like, <clears throat> oh, and dude, and the dude's killing it as a heel. Uh, he's 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 improved so much since NXT. And has brought so much. He's become an entertainer. Do you think we'll have with with Elias and Aiden English the first ever song versus song match? <laughs> Hell yeah, man! Oh, because you know, t- you know what today is, Brando. It's Rusev it's Day. Always Rusev Day. And I love your blue microphone cord. Dude, I love my blue microphone cord. I want to get a red one. Do they have red? Do you think? Oh yeah. Oh, I want it then. Yeah. Do uh, uh you know, uh, Tyler. Got yellow. yellow. Yeah. That's cool. I liked that. Totally different. Nar. It's Nar. Anyways, back to this card. So uh, you think Roman for this match, almost definitely just by the way they want to set him up to be the future and Brock and all that shit that we've got going on. Possibly the end for Brock. Maybe setting up. Uh, th- there was also a rumor he's going to have one final program maybe with Lashley. Lashley is supposed to be coming in, yeah. Ah. Uh. I want to see that. <laughs> Ain't nobody want to see Bobby Lashley. Like, I'm sorry, but he's never been good. Um, Rob, our good buddy Silent Rob, he has always been fascinated by how small Bobby Lashley's mouth is. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say his voice. <laughs> well, no, but... a very little voice. He would, Rob, Rob used to do this impersonation of his lips, like when he would get, like, get mean, and like... <laughs> his, his mouth would be so small. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> you can't even look at it without cracking up. All right, so we'll move on in this card here. First ever women's elimination chamber match, Brando. Let me give you the participants. We've got Alexa Bliss defending her title against Bailey, Sasha Banks, Sonya Deville, Mandy Rose, and Mickey James. What's the outcome here? I'm going with Alexa. Alexa wins. Uh, dirtily maybe dirty. She doesn't think, win it clean. Well, I'm thinking that she mm. she picks it apart where she she capitalizes on other people's hard work. Waiting like uh, you know, bank statement gets hit or something. She takes the pinfall or goes and covers. Well, or I, 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 I it may even end up that way, like she doesn't even get that many pinfalls. She may just just get, the like, last one, last one or two. Yeah, 
That would be awesome. Uh, obviously, the reasoning for this is you want to set up a possible friend versus friend type thing going towards Mania. Nia is not going to beat Asuka. They don't want to give up that undefeated streak, especially that they've got her in the literally ship sailing right directly towards a title. Mm -hmm. Like the worst thing to do now is to take that momentum and just undercut it. Right. So Nia loses that match. We're going to talk. We don't need to really talk about it because we're talking about it now. But um, that match is going to, of course, make it seem like Asuka is going to go to face Alexa Bliss, swerve to Charlotte, and then Alexa is going to face Nia. Yeah, because they've just been operating under the assumption that, 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 that she's staying on Raw. Correct. And, and not, she hasn't even stated it yet, has she? She hasn't said where she's going. No, correct. Not at all. So it's interesting here because then you look at Nia versus Alexa. It's a squash match, and Alexa loses. Mm -hmm. Nia gets her first title clean and clear. I mean, there's it writes itself. But then, Brando, now here's the conundrum I'm having. If you think about this match and you think about the Shinsuke match and you think about the Roman match and you think about maybe a Miz Finn match, it's a lot of titles changing hands. I mean, a majority of your major titles are going to allegedly change hands at WrestleMania. It's too predictable. They're going to want to swerve us in somehow. So maybe Alexa retains. Or maybe Alexa doesn't even make it to Mania. You know? See, Who knows? I, I, I don't agree with Alexa not making it because I think that she... Is probably the most bankable star on Raw. Yeah. As far as, like, despite, you know, the Raw having, you know, some of the more talented women wrestlers, she's she's a, she's done a lot, and she's a great character. And she's not bad in the ring herself, so. No, she's great in the ring, too. And she's punk as fuck, which I dig. So, it's a bonus. And she's married but, to Bobby Murphy. And you're right. There's, like, a lot of chances for titles to change hands. That makes me think that that's... That if they have tag title matches, they won't change hands. Or like maybe Shinsuke doesn't win, and it's not a clear, decisive thing, and it gets decided at that first dual brand pay per view, where they're really trying to, you know what I'm saying? But then you fuck up an opportunity, because your your Shawn Michaels WrestleMania 12 moment is there. Mm -hmm. It's fucking, you know, no, in Shinsuke's the bullseye. Shinsuke's win has got to be definite, and that's the thing is that Shinsuke and Roman are most definitely winning. And then you're just like, well, I guess Miz beats Finn. But that sucks because then it I puts agree. Finn down one notch. It hurts him. It really uh, does. And then, and that's even if you <clears throat> do that. But like, maybe you go in with Bobby Roode still as U.S. champ, and then he beats Orton. I mean, and we're already crowning a new cruiserweight champion too. Which I definitely I had the the bracket up, but I don't remember it. We talked about it. It was like Roderick Strong and Kalisto. That's one of them. And then TJP versus Cedric Alexander. That's one. And then Bobby Murphy versus some dude. I don't remember. Uh, uh, Drew Gulak, I think? No, 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 no. Uh, Ali. Oh, oh, oh. Mustafa Ali. Yes. And then it was Drew Gulak versus someone. Yeah. I don't, I don't recall that last someone, but yeah. Yep. Uh, I think I did a pretty good job of fucking remembering that surprisingly, yeah, and I don't. I, did. I don't have it up here at all. But I knew Roderick Strong and I knew Kalisto. <laughs> knows it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we already talked about the Oscar Nia Jax match. Obviously, here's an interesting thing. We've already talked about her a little bit, a couple times already today. Uh, Ronda contract signing on a pay per view. Absolutely. This is not a Monday Night Raw contract signing, mm -hmm. Brando. This is do it on PPV. You pay your money to see me sign my contract. I think another thing that it was was also trying to help sell tickets. Because I, I heard the, that chamber tickets were moving slow. And so they announced Rousey's contract signing. is like, you'll get to see Rousey in person. Yep, for her first official Sorry. after the what the fuck are you pointing at the WrestleMania mm -hmm. sign twice for. Are you saying you're going to have two matches? I'm confused. That'd be crazy. I, why, why did you show up just to tell me where you're going? You could have just went there. <laughs> you you could have just met me there. <laughs> like that's the whole thing. Um, this is one I'm looking forward to. We don't. Th I don't think this is a payoff match or any kind of blow off match. Woken Matt Hardy, Bray Wyatt. Bray has a pinfall over Matt mm -hmm. at Raw 25. So and it was a pretty disappointing match, all things considered. <laughs> it wasn't great. Not at all. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't special. And they really. I know. I know they're trying to tell this story but I feel like it's going to take a while and this is a slow burn and these are all things I've already said and that's fine I'll rehash all my words again that's cool 
Uh, the struggle's real. The struggle is real. So, <laughs> Revenge of the Ons, part three. <laughs> I'm starting to get there, man. I know. I can see it. I'm so sorry. Folks, this is Nate's fault. This is the Podfather's fault. I'm admitting it right here that I shouldn't have fucked with my phone. I shouldn't have tried to plug it in. I should have just made sure the episode was safe and then fucked with my phone. He could have been a contender. I was a bad... He could have been a contender. He could have been, he could have been a contender. Let me tell you, my son. When I look at you and you say you're the pop father, you're going to wake up with a head in your bed. <laughs> I hope I have my head in my bed. <laughs> if my head's not in my bed, I got problems. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what kind of head it's going to be. Oh, I want it to be a surprise. Well, hopefully it is a surprise head. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Do you remember Robin Hood Men in Tights? Yeah. Do you remember when Dom DeLuise was the was the godfather? Yeah. And he's like he starts talking like that and goes, You're gonna kill the mommy like I'm having trouble. Oh sorry, I just came back from the dentist. <laughs> I left the gods. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because Brando uh, Brando actually did wear Pagasa when he was doing the doing the role of Godfather. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, there we went. <laughs> Tangent City. Tangent City. Wrestling. Not today, folks. <laughs> Not today, folks. That was a little foodies watching movies. Uh, Matter Bray. I believe on the last time, the last time we talked about this, I said that Matt needs to win this. However, I could see Bray getting the win and possibly... Jeff Hardy showing up. Maybe like Bray starts to attack him viciously, and then brother brother hero comes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my god! <laughs> well, they're not going to call him Brother Zero, you know. I mean, or maybe they do call him Brother Zero. It's kind of dope. Brother Zero. Yeah. <laughs> I see, man. I see what you're doing. You're not woke. Oh, I see what you did there. Consumer of terrestrial entities. <laughs> I'm the eater of worlds. That's a pretty good bray, actually. Um, <clears throat> I did it. At, I, I did it at work once. When I can really get the movement, because how, how he moves. Yeah. Um. It's a little bit better, but... The thing I think I would have trouble nailing if I were to try to do Bray is when he gets his voice high, like, Nah, man! You know, like, when he gets, like, uh, really... Nah, man! Yes, kind of. That was actually really good, yeah. Okay, fast lane. We're going to talk about that next? It, well, it only had four. We already talked about one of them. U.S. title match, uh, Bobby Roode versus Randy. I'm going with Bobby. Um, and then we had the SmackDown Women, Charlotte versus Ruby Riot. Uh, I'm going with Charlotte. Uh, SmackDown tags, Usos, and New Day. I'm going with Usos. I say New Day. Just uh, like I said, I think they need to have some pull and push with those titles. Every time they get another title win back and forth, it makes each team better. It gives them a little bit more legacy point, you know? And granted, the Usos having a great long run. Maybe you get them close to threatening to beat the New Day's record before you pull the titles off them. I don't know, but uh, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know here. Um, and then the last one was the Fatal Five Way: AJ Styles versus Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Dolph Ziggler, and Baron Corbin. Yes, sir. Baron Corbin and AJ having a stellar match a couple nights mm -hmm. ago on SmackDown surprised me. Uh, also, another match: WWE Fastlane 2018 tickets now available. They did it again, but they put it right below the AJ Styles match, so it's not at the very bottom like the last time. I thought there was another match. I was like, oh, my God, we missed a match. But no, we didn't. Uh, also, when I was looking at this, uh, also crazy that Ruby Riot from Lafayette already has a title opportunity. She's only been on the main roster for a couple months now. Yeah, it was like December. Yeah, that's crazy, but talented, talented worker. Uh Fast lane. That's all I have there, Brando. Yeah, I fully expect more to be announced as, it, like, as we go forward. See, what sucks is that with Raw having mm -hmm. an extra hour, they seem to have more time to dedicate to their storylines. 
Yeah. And SmackDown, it really suffers because then it's like, then they're left with it. It's like you have those matches that we just said right there. It's like, well, then what else are we going to do? Well, let's throw a cruiserweight in there. And then Mojo Rally. Yep, it's going to be a Mojo Rally match for something. <laughs> Maybe they'll bring back, uh, we didn't mention this, but we did mention it, but we haven't been able to mention it now. So now we're mentioning it. Apollo. Apollo. Yeah, the whole Apollo uh, Cruise thing where they took the cruise out of his name uh, because it was too close to uh, the sh- shooter down in Florida. The, down in Florida, yeah. <clears throat> so um, now he's just Apollo. And Big E. And who else have they Cesaro. named? Cesaro. Cesaro, yeah. Rusev. What was it? What was it? Alexander Rusev. No, 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 no. Cesaro. Um, his name was. Oh come on! It's the tip of my tongue. Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was the first one that came to mind. Ralph Cesaro. <laughs> it sounds good. Oh, no, it's like Dudley Hogan. <laughs> Okay, that was something that was never going to get recaptured. <laughs> yes, it is. Cause <laughs> You're making it so. I'm trying, damn it. Oh, dude. It's Cesaro. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to actually look because you got my brain going. Wikipedia. It's on the tip of my tongue. Don't. Nope. I searched Wikipedia. <laughs> Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, folks, it has been a oh, weird, wicked, <laughs> wacky bullshit day. C- Antonio Cesaro. <laughs> Are you sure that sounds like a movie star's name? Uh, his real name's Claudio. Claudio Cag- uh, Cagnolos. I, I can't remember his name. Cast. Staglinoli. Castaglinoli. <laughs> he went by that name in Ring of Honor. Yeah. Okay. What's his name? It's coming up, man. Chill. Hold up. Sorry. Okay. You're okay. I'm just he shortened from his previous ring name, Antonio Cesaro. Right on. Do you know what happens, Brando? What? Do you know what happens when I can't get things straight and you're right and I'm wrong? <laughs> I just made the <laughs> list. <laughs> Putting myself on that list. I guess that's like a stupid movie star's name. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. probably what <laughs> Vince said. <laughs> no one's going to buy into Antonio Cesaro? What are you, Antonio Bandera? <laughs> <laughs> Bandera. That's what I said. The S is silent. Did I say Banderas? <laughs> Antonio Bandera. Can you imagine if there's a wrestler named Antonio Bandera? Did you say Pantera? No, Bandera. <laughs> oh, Bandera. Um, okay, uh, Elias Sampson. Elias. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh... They've done this just, they, I, I hate when they do it. Because uh, it throws you off for a while, but then you totally almost forget. Like Big E, Langston. Well, and they did it for a while with Charlotte. Oh, yeah, she was just Charlotte, not Charlotte Flair. Mm-hmm. Health scares with Rick ba- happened, and, and they were like, oh, shit. Um, I don't know if Bailey's ever had a last name. Ever? She just <laughs> was born Bailey. <laughs> what are we going to name her? <laughs> She's fucking Bailey. What's her middle name? No. <laughs> no. Just fucking Bailey. Just, just Bailey. <laughs> She's a hugger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, but anyways, Dudley Hogan. <laughs> Dudley Hogan. God damn it. And it sucks because no one else is getting the reference of Dudley Hogan. They're going to because I'm about to shoehorn it back into our s- story because the whole reason we're talking about anything. Anything? Damn it. <laughs> the only reason we're talking about anything right now is because you lost the episode. <laughs> Correct. Thanks, me. Good job, Nate. I could be in bed right now. You're right. You could be. <laughs> but you're here right now. I'm right here. Uh, so, the Hall of Fame is something I think we should touch on. Yeah. On our way to WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. 
Several it, names. It's a good have thing that we announced. did not forget to talk about it last time. Good thing I didn't forget to talk about it right now. <laughs> so Goldberg's going in, and rumor is he's going to get inducted by Paul Heyman. Doesn't make sense. That makes sense. Should be Sting, Hogan, somebody who was a WW or WCW like WW. Well, double double E. I don't know who would you have induct Goldberg. It can't be Paul Heyman. It just can't. I think that's a terrible choice. I believe I said Kevin Nash. I think that makes sense. And I think it was funny when you said that Scott Hall should come out and hand him the cow prod or whatever. The did taser. you say cow prod? The cattle stick, whatever the fuck it's called. I don't know. Well, no. Like, it sounded like to me you said cow prod, like not cat toll. You usually went K, like, or like, like C A L, cow prod. Cow, <laughs> cow prod. <laughs> Cattle prod. Uh, also recently announced the Doodleys. They should be inducted by the Heymans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although, I think it'd be cool to have Spike do it. That would be interesting. Do you think Spike has a good working relationship or has any relationship whatsoever in regards to the WWE? Not as far as I'm aware. <laughs> but mm-hmm. neither did Jim Cornette. They brought him back for the rock and roll. So. That's true. That is very true. Uh, Ivory also announced mm-hmm. going into the HOF. Uh, Ivory's announcement. Who would you have induct her? Val Venus. Yeah, or Godfather. Good or father. Maybe, maybe. On the Poe train. <laughs> maybe one of the right to censor dudes. Um, I mean, she wrestled after that a little bit. And she also probably had some lady wrestlers she had a really great rapport with. Maybe Molly Holly could say something. Mm-hmm. Could be Jacqueline, possibly. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but the big surprise so far out of the... Uh, out of the news coming from the Hall of Fame is the most recent name announced. J E double F J A double R E double T. He he's Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, ain't he great? He is great. Well, he's he's done a lot. You know, he's been all over the place. He's been in the WCW. He's been in the WWE. He was man. Think about Jeff Jarrett, Brando, and we didn't really bring this up earlier, but. He had some real traumatic shit happen in his life in the middle of his career. You know, losing to Owen and being... He was supposed to face Owen in that match, right? No. um, It was Godfather, but Jeff had the match right after him. That's right. And Jeff was standing in gorilla as they wheeled Owen past him. Oof. And then they just yelled at him to go. And then he had to just go. Yeah, he walked out there te- crying, tears in his eyes. I mean, fucking traumatized, bro. And he went on to do some crazy things. He really shaped professional wrestling uh, in the aughts. Because, you know, after he leaves the WWE and the fall of WCW, he goes on, he buys NWA or he... he okay. Did he actually buy it, or did he just partner no. with them? Or he partnered with them because they, uh, Jeff, along with his dad Jerry, and maybe a few other people, started TNA wrestling. Total nonstop action, and they got like a like a sponsor or a or a financer, okay. and that and that those shares are were eventually bought by Panda Energy, which is where the Carters came in. But they partnered with NWA. NWA was looking to kind of revitalize its its brand. So in NWA was they had NWA Wildside, they had NWA something else, but this became NWA TNA. And so they they got the the NWA license, they got the NWA World Heavyweight title and the tag team titles, and then they created a the the first TNA belt was the NWA TNA X Division Championship, and yeah, I think they had the NWA until 2006. You know, seven around the time Hogan and Bischoff came in. No, um, mm-hmm. around the time Kurt came in. Gotcha. Cause, well, because Kurt was there. Kurt came in in September of '06. 
And then I remember Kurt won the title, but it's not officially recognized by the NWA because they they say that they they stripped Christian Cage of the title uh, because they were wanting him to make more dates for the NWA promotions. And TNA were like, no, we don't want to loan him out. So they said, all right, well, then we, we they, they rescind their deal. And so they had Kurt win, but in storyline and in real life, he, he wasn't champion. So when they crowned the first TNA champion, it was Kurt. And that was Slammiversary, King of the Mountain. They had the first belt, the first like official TNA title belt. Yeah, the, yeah, the Milliken <clears throat> style. Mm-hmm. I love that belt. I thought that belt's great. I love the design. It's the yeah, it's the one that I have the picture with and with Joe. That crazy day in history where we happened to be at the same exact place and didn't realize it until we were there, and then we were in the exact same place again to do a podcast. <laughs> I love how you just went back to that. That was awesome. Cause oh. We did Journey into Comics live from there. I was thinking about doing this podcast a second time. No. <laughs> I actually wasn't being an asshole this okay. time. I was actually saying, yeah, no, we were actually in that same hockey arena. Which is awesome. Doing a live podcast. like That's so like, crazy. So many years later. So crazy to think about that. But back to wrestling stuff. Uh, you know, Jeff helped launch so many careers. I mean, to the next level. AJ. Joe, Christopher Daniels, Eric Young, uh, trying to think, uh, Petey Williams, Jesus, and Canadian Destroyer is one of the coolest finishers in wrestling history, in my humble opinion, just because of how fucking silky smooth he could make it look, you know? Uh, Jarrett is incredibly uh, crafty at knowing talent, you know? He had global force, and I think he had ideas, and I think the allure of going back to having something that was already established got there, and he tried to make it work with TNA, mm-hmm. and it didn't. And he's not to fault for that, obviously. It's really interesting to see that he and WWE could mend whatever fence may have been broken. I don't know if there even was one. Uh, but he uh, – who, who who inducts Jeff? Road Dog. I love that. Road Dog's already there. Yeah, Road Dogs, man, uh, th- that's the easy one. Uh, you know, with Rhodey and the history and all that, and plus the stuff with uh, being my baby tonight. Or okay, I'm gonna ask you a really left field question. We did not talk about on the podcast that didn't exist. Celebrity this year, who do you induct? It's always the weird one because sometimes the celebrity is like on the nose. Like, oh, this person, did, like, is Tyson in the? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. oh, that's right. He, yeah, okay, okay. You know, like Mr. T, another one makes perfect sense. You know, Cindy Lauper makes perfect sense. He, she was in, right? I don't think she's in, but T is. T is. That's right. Because T had that long ass speech in front of his mama. About his fucking mom. Want to thank my mama? God, man. I, I just remember watching. Like, oh my god, he keeps going on and on about his mom. I heard a rumor at near the end of the year last year. You say that with real disdain. I can see it all over your face. You know, there's only a few people. Oh, this is going to be bad. There's only a few people who are in the hall, as far as a celebrity goes, that, like, I'm like, why? Donald Trump is one. I actually, he had a, a, a really couple of really big moments yeah, in the company. I guess. I mean, he had the whole Mania 23 angle, and then he had the angle where he bought Raw. It was short-lived, but he, you know, it was something. As a celebrity, like, when I, when I say I don't mind Trump being in, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that, be, like... He's at least done something with wrestling. Well, at least he was <clears throat> doing something, because, like, you get Arnold Schwarzenegger, who I love. I love Schwarzenegger. He's appeared twice on television for them as a guest just promoting a movie that doesn't really make him a hall of famer no. and i get you want to honorarily have these like stars in your thing well they partnered with arnold to, to do like to do, like the arnold classic stuff and all that kind of stuff so I mean, he's worked with them in other ways but not like you know i mean trump had fun and he participated they they came to him, and they're like, "Hey, you know, 
uh, we'd like to see what you think about taking a stunner. And his guys are like, no, absolutely not. And then Trump's like, what do you do? Like, and they're like, well, he's going to kind of like, he's going to kind of kick you here and then he's going to take you down. He goes, cool, let's do it. Let's have fun. And so Trump got stunned. It looked awful, but it did look awful. But I <laughs> he mean, he also shaved McMahon's head. Yeah, but I mean, like they like, <laughs> and despite of like, pull it all, all, I'll put all the political bullshit aside. Yeah, he did something. Yeah, and he 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 gave the the person who I heard is going in has gave has given nothing. Mike Adamly. Number one, he's not a celebrity. <laughs> You're right. I'm just I'm number two. Web. He he has given more than this person. He would have went to the Hall of Fame because <laughs> he would have said it wrong. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> or the Hall of Fam. <laughs> he went to the Hall of Fam. <laughs> That's where Jeff Harvey is. <laughs> the first inductee into the WWE <laughs> Hall of Fame, Jeff Harvey. <laughs> um, I don't know if we do we have much Hall of Fame talk left. I still haven't told you who's. Oh who's yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's all this suspense. <laughs> Keep building it up, man. Okay, tell me. Kid Rock. No. Brando, that might be the end of me watching WWE for a while. Like on strike style. Because that can't happen. He's done nothing. He's played American Badass a couple times for Taker's theme or some shit. That hey. doesn't even hardly count. Guess guess what the theme song is. Guess who's who plays the theme song for this year's Mania. Are you gonna say Kid Rock? Yeah, I believe it's Kid Rock. It's, it's like some, it's some Mardi Gras party theme from New Orleans. Party Gras? Party Gras? Oh, hey, <laughs> look at you! Yeah, look at this big brain on Brett. Yes, Pulp Fiction reference. Say what again? What? <laughs> what I'm thinking. <laughs> Say what again? <laughs> what? I dare you. What? I double dog. What? <laughs> oh my god. They speak English and what? What? <laughs> what ain't no country I ever heard of? <laughs> oh. Oh. That one got <laughs> That one got <laughs> My vote is no for Kid Rock. I, I, you know what? Heard it here first, folks. I don't want him. But let him, let him do, like, let him do their thing. I don't care. Let him, he's like, yeah. And then he's like, he is American flab <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. Oh, there it is. I could not locate my telephone. But well, hopefully happens. you're not plugging it into the power strip. I ain't fucking touching that son <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Stay the fuck away from that. Oh, man. Brando, there is a little bit of news on the indie circuit I wanted to quickly discuss. Bullet Club, they're in heat. A lot of shit going on. Moving their way towards all in September 1st. Also, July. I wanted to remember this. I didn't say this last time on the podcast, but I remembered this time. Funko Pops in July. Bullet Club will have them. Really? That's cool. Yes. I am going to have to own them all. Like, really. To have a Cody Pop and have a fucking pair of Young Bucks Pops. Like, if they're a two-pack. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> I like how we have no visual representation of what you just went through right there. 
<laughs> they don't want the visual representation. If of our what listeners I just did. have stayed with us for this long through this slap happy, giggly gag fest of a podcast, that <laughs> at the least, at the very least, sounds more professional, if not an actually better show than the last time then that will probably make them turn it off because they're like, what the heck is they? like, dude, if they have a double pack of the young bucks and then you made this guttural, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, what does that even mean? That's like the painful, painful sh- orgasms, the shameful finish. Yeah. Like, why do you, why does anybody have painful orgasms? Not painful, that's, shameful. That's a- not painful, shameful. They're oh, different. geez, I came. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah, like you know, and like like you like, ever feel like really disgusted with yourself after you masturbate? No, you d- never. No, you've never just been like God. I need to like stop looking at this porn on my phone. And no, just... literally, I wipe up and go to sleep. <laughs> 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 Hashtag T M I. Hey, you brought it up. You're right. Okay, fair enough. Anyways, Young Bucks and Bullet Club, they're splitting, possibly. They're trying to slow build a storyline to Chicago, possibly. I hope that's the case. Maybe CM Punk makes his appearance there. Who knows? I'm not sure. Typically, we do a random highlight, Brando, and I don't know how to feel about what happened because somebody who was highlighted randomly also got taken off the list now. They they just left the list, and we put someone else on that list. And I don't know if we, like, add one more to that list and, and re-up, or we try to, like, jimmy through the... I, I don't know what to do Because we've here. already kind of discussed it, and that's the thing, is that the whole idea behind the random highlights is to not be prepared on who we're going to talk Correct. About, and just pull from the cuff, pull from our memories, pull from our matches. And we talked about Kevin Nash. He got selected this time. And, like, to to put it in brief... You know, we talked about his career. We talked about his highs and some of his lows. Um, first and foremost, uh, <laughs> my favorite match from him was Brett versus versus Brett at Survivor Series '95. Uh, that's it's an awesome match. It's he kind of turns heel at the end. Uh, did, did you ever watch that match? Probably at least once, but not that I can rapidly okay. recall. That was the first time on WWF television that somebody went through the announce table. Really? Mm-hmm. Brett goes through. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, he's on the apron, and Diesel goes and like kind of like put, like pushes him, and he goes flying through and goes head first right in through. Whoa! And then uh, like that was a high spot, like end spot of the match back then. <laughs> it's like yeah, match is over. Uh, he's dead. He went through the announce table once. So uh, you know, Kev gets him back in the ring, and Kev is going to finish him off with the power bomb. You know, and then you know he he's got him bent over, and then Brett just collapses, right? And Kev's looking around like, got this, man. And then he bends down to get him. Small package. Him. Small package. One, two, three. Oh! That that's the best kind of victory, and makes it so memorable when it's not a major finish, when it's not a sharpshooter or anything mm-hmm. like that. Having it just be a quick finish like that is shocking. Well, then, like, Diesel got pissed off, got up, picked up Brett, <clears throat> powerbombed him. Yep. And then I want to say powerbombed him again. Damn. Yeah. Nash is awesome. The Russian. Super Shredder. NWO. NWO Wolfpack. Was he in Magic Mike? He was in Magic Mike. And Magic Mike XL. And also, he is a Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. He was inducted. What? 2015? I don't remember 14? what year. I honestly... No, fuck. I don't remember what year. 14 was Warrior, wasn't it? Yeah, Warrior and Hall. I think Nash was before that or after? Did Nash get in before Hall? Uh, no, I think he went in the year after. Okay. So 16. No, no. Or 15. No, that would be 15. It, 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 like, yeah, it was 15. Huh. Well... Then it's possible. I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. It's possible that the NWO... Could be inducted into the Hall of Fame again. One of these days. One uh, of the three. Who would only the three? <laughs> you're trying to <laughs> you're trying to boot this back up. You're trying to get this going. Yes, I am. I'm doing a great yeah, job. Hogan Hall and Nash. Yeah. 
like Dudley Hogan or Hulk Hogan. <laughs> All right, so we were, you went through the names like, well, that's going to piss off X Pac and it is and Big Show, it is and Scott Norton it and is. Dudley Hogan, and I'm like. <laughs> Horace Hogan? Yeah, he, he looks, he like, looks a like a Dudley. He does. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Dudley looking motherfucker. <laughs> he was the worst. He was actually related to Hulk, right? Yeah, it's like his nephew. His real life nephew, whose last name would be Balea? Probably. Weird. Weird. <laughs> I love Kevin Nash. He's great. Finger poke of doom. Got to talk about it briefly. The... Strongest move in WCW history. Yeah, destroyed the company. <laughs> Buried it. <laughs> Finished the company in one poke. Um, <coughs> do you remember Luther Reigns? Luther Reigns. Yes. All right. He, he wrestled in WCW. I think this is him. Somebody, if this isn't him, please tell me. But he, he wrestled in WCW. He had like this flat top where his hair did this. And his name was Horseshoe. Really? <laughs> Horseshoe? <laughs> That's awesome. It, but, it's, but it was spelled like H-O-R-S-H-U. Horseshit? <laughs> <laughs> no. It, like H-O-R-S-H-U. You. Horseshoe. Hugh. Hugh. Horseshoe. Horseshoe. Did he do? Was he good wrestler? No. Okay, good. I'm no. glad to know. I just didn't know, man. What if we need to put him on the random highlight? Uh, Horseshoe going on there. <laughs> oh, dude, that and I remember. Uh, I remember uh, this one dude, and he was like a military like gimmick, and his name was Cobra. And like. His interest music was like Morse code, like beep, 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 beep. It's like the intro to Jericho. Each <laughs> it's like some, some dude sitting in the back, just like, 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 and like, he ended up becoming the fake Sting. Fuck you, fake Sting. And then I remember Sergeant Craig, the pit bull pitman. What? Are these people real? Yes. You're just making this up. No, dude. They're like fucking jobbers. You're working me? No, I'm not working you. They're like, they're like fucking jobbers in WCW. I That's... remember uh, I remember uh, El Dandy. El Dandy the Dandy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> El Dandy. I remember. He was uh, going to win World War Three. He, he totally was going to win World War III. <laughs> But it was just the cameras. We didn't see the other ring filled with competitors. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember, uh, like Mark Starr. Who is Mark Starr? His name was just Mark Starr. I don't know what the hell. Oh, he, he never said. became anybody else. No, I always wonder. I always assume that you know these jobbers that came up to there, something else. Well, uh, there was a tag team called High Voltage. Okay, and one of the tag team members, I, I only remember one of their names. Right, right off my head, but his name was Kenny Chaos. Did he become anybody? No. Oh, damn it. Uh, I keep thinking you're going to tell me they became someone. Nobody in WCW jobber territory became anybody of any sort. Damn. Um, come on, man. There's, there's, there, there are more. Cause Wasn't just... there a McGillicuddy? That was ECW. Beulah McGillicuddy. Beulah McGillicuddy. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, she posts for Penthouse. Where? What? I didn't mean to say where. <laughs> I was going to say what. <laughs> <laughs> that, my friend, is a Freudian slip. <laughs> I guess I didn't know she was in Penthouse. Yeah, that's how she got hired. Oh, cause, cause Raven found her and got her a job. That's not awkward. Hey. So, uh, I was looking in Penthouse and I saw you naked and you were doing pretty disgusting things to yourself. You want a job in ECW? We wrestle. And you might get paid occasionally. So, I, uh, if you've watched the Forever Hardcore documentary, like, Sandman's talking about Raven, how, like, Raven has so many ideas 
Raven would come up in the locker room and goes, hey, man, I got to do it. Like, what's this? And he pulls out, like, this napkin from the Waffle House. <laughs> He's got some ideas on it. Like, literally, all the ideas for the Blue Meanie and Stevie Richards was done to amuse Raven. That's hilarious. Like, they were all just done to make himself laugh. <laughs> like, they did the Baron Von Stevie, where <laughs> Stevie Richards came out like Baron Von Ratty. <laughs> and they came out, and they... Uh, they impersonated Public Enemy. Uh, of course, came, the BWO. They, the, yeah. It, <laughs> the, 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 with the BWO, the Blue Meanie had a chicken bone in his mouth instead of a toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, the Hall of Fame <laughs> has two more inductees, I think. Because while Jeff Harvey is going to be our first inductee into the Hall of Fame... <laughs> The next two inductees announced are the Dandy and Dudley Hogan. I'm not going to give it up. Do you remember Super Colo? Yeah. He wore a silver mask. Yeah. And it just looked like he wears sunglasses on the mask. <laughs> and he wore a backwards golf hat. <laughs> um what were they had the numbers on their faces? Viano. Viano like four and Viano five. Viano four and five. Yeah. And then it, then the one night on that year they had Viano six. Nuh-uh. And it was Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> Whoa! The fourth Vi uh, the third Viano. So does that mean Jeff Jarrett might have an opportunity to be inducted into the Hall of Fame twice with the Vianos? <laughs> I don't think the Vianos are going with it. They'll go into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh, my God. Also, jump on my Poe Train Hall of Fame edition. <sighs> Just so you know. Are you okay? Are you going to die now? No, I'm fine. I'm just tired. We ready to wrap this, Brando? I think we're ready we to We actually wrap did this. almost an hour now. What the fuck? We sat here that long? Yeah. Jesus Christ, I'm so tired. You ever smack your face on the microphone and almost <laughs> KO yours? Do you, do you know what's funny? I totally did. I was like, cool. Oh. Do you know what's funny? Like back, like, um, like back when Street Fighter came out and it's like, KO, you know? I always thought, like, like since it was Japan, it was backwards. So it was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I was a kid, I, I didn't know it meant knockout. So does that mean you thought that his name was Steen Kevin? <laughs> no, no, no. It's back when I was a kid. Playing Street Fighter 2 on my Super Nintendo. You're it's talking like... about Street Fighter 2. Now, I was, you said, I th you were just saying Street Fighter. So I was like, oh, oh the last Street Fighter. That's recent. No, shit. no like, like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, like, you know, like, you're like fucking, you're, you're fighting and you go, Psh! he goes, rah, 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 Okay. <laughs> it's like, and then it shows that, and th and I thought it meant that I did okay. <laughs> like you got the grade S. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like well then because then it'd be like okay perfect, <laughs> perfect, Mister, ooh perfect. We'll talk about him soon. One of these days. You want to get into the wrapping it up, or did you want me to do the wrapping it up? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sticking with us for this extra late, super crazy, goofball-oriented Hall of Fame edition of Journey into Wrestling. I really appreciate you checking us out. 
on all of the great podcast platforms that we're on, including iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music, and Spotify. You can also check us out over on the YouTubes as a backup over there. We're also on social media on the Facebook page, where every other Wednesday that there isn't a show, I do a show called Rebooking with Brando, where I sit down for about 10 minutes and go through a, an, an angle that got booked in the past, and I see how I can kind of mix it around and change it up to see if I can make it better. And I'd love to see the dissolution of the NWO done by you. Like the end of the NWO, like the wolf pack split, all that stuff, how it may be altering who's and where mm -hmm. and all of that. It would be awesome. Just one of the many things I would love to hear you book. Obviously, another one is the invasion. I would love to get your take on the invasion. Yeah, dude. And see, uh, one thing with the rebooking, <laughs> I always try to make sure that I don't fantasy book. Uh, where I'm only going to use who is uh, – that's the one thing with the Macho Man. You know, the Macho Man uh, – the reason why I called it a Macho Send-Off is because he was with the WWF until, like, late October, early November of, like, 94. And that was, like – I let it up past that, but I really feel like he might have stayed if he'd have been used properly. If they would have given him something to do. Yeah, well, see, and I think I might have said it on there, but I kind of feel like – like, you know, Savage is going through a hard time a couple years before that, and they kind of let Vince down. Vince wasn't getting what he wanted out of him, so he's like, all right, man, all right, you're done. I guess I'm just going to move on with some younger folks. And Savage, I think Savage just felt like, no, man, I, I, I kind of want to get in the ring a little bit more. And that's why he went to WCW. But, like, since Savage was there, like, the, the whole storyline about him with the new generation going around and then his exit, he was there for that entire time. So I'm not pulling him from anything. Mm-mm. You know, and, and that's my, like with the invasion, I'm going to struggle with that because it's like, what, how can you do a WCW invasion and not have Sting? How can you do a WCW invasion and not have Bischoff? Or Goldberg. Flair, Goldberg, Steiner. Could you imagine if Austin was going to win that match and Goldberg speared him out of fucking nowhere during the invasion? It would have blown up. I digress. I just want to ask you, though, do you think that Macho went into Vince's office before he left and was like, you know, Vince? I'm going nowhere. <laughs> oh, man. Well, actually, no. He called him up the phone and goes, Will you see there, uh, Vince? Um, I think I'm actually thinking about going down south. He's like, Well, damn, pal. I thought you and Liz got separated. <laughs> it's not really what I meant there, Vince. <laughs> We're talking about going to work going down there to go to the WCW. All right. Well, damn, pal. I love that Macho like officiated our entire <laughs> podcast, and I didn't realize it. Yeah, dude, I found this right after he died. The defining moments from it's WrestleMania sick. Seven. It's fucking yeah. gorgeous. I love it. Hat never, and everything. I've never opened it because I'm. Why like, the fuck would you? Because I'm crazy. And I, sure. And I open my. Sure. Fair. What was that? Your pewter. It was like, I'm done. I tapped out. <laughs> no more. No more pewting. Yeah, so guys, we don't know when you're going to get this episode. A couple minutes. Be, a couple minutes. Thank you guys for listening so much. Uh, we're here every other Wednesday right here on the Journey to Comics Network. Make sure you subscribe on all your favorite services. Make sure you head over to Patreon. Throw us a couple bucks over there. Help out. Help support the show. Help support the network every single week. We are giving you early access for a dollar. Exclusive content for three bucks. We're on the road to Infinity War. Where each and every single Wednesday, same day that we're on, you get a new review of a Marvel film going towards Infinity War. Well, where one of these shows on the network sit down and review another show. And we, this show, since you and I also host another show, it's like. No need to double dip. We yeah. could have really, I mean, if we really wanted to like apples to oranges, we could have done one as JIC and the other one as JIW. But wrestling doesn't really insert itself into the MCU as well as, like, the other shows can do the... Batista, I guess, would be the only thing. But then it was all random, so it's not we, and we didn't, that we didn't and get it. We didn't get anything with Batista in it, so... Yeah, um, yeah man, I don't know. Uh, you go to Patreon. Also, one thing to mention is when you're on the different podcasting things, search Journey into Comics Network. Don't search Journey into Wrestling. It'll confuse you. Search Journey into Comics Network. Also, go to tinyurl.com backslash Journey into Wrestling for all the episodes on Season 2 of Journey into Wrestling. 
because I made a cool little mini link that makes it so easy for you to find our archives. I think that's going to do it, Brando. Oh, hell yeah, man. Oh, hell yeah, man. Hi, Mark. Say what again? What? Until next time, I'm Brando. I'm Nate. And we're going to save this podcast this time. See you next time. Woo!